What's going on ladies and gents and welcome back to a brand new video. This is Web Dev Journey and today we're going to be talking about Passport. Um, so we're going to get right into it because it's going to be somewhat of a long video and I don't want to make it that long. And the first thing we need to do is npm install uh, Passport. And then uh, inside of libs we're going to make a new file. We're going to call this auth.js. Because I want everything that deals with passport or authenticating inside this auth.js and then just request it wherever we need it. So in here, const passport is going to equal require passport. <clears throat> and we are going to be talking about uh, module.exports a little bit of what it does we're not going to get too much into detail about these things initialize and the first thing we're going to talk about is initialize so we're going to be using exporting passport dot initialize and what this does is basically returns a middleware function that uses the request or the rec object to store passport internal data in it that's all it does and well yeah anyways uh, next thing we're going to export is a session and this is going to be assigned to passport dot session. Now what this does, it looks up, it looks for a previously serialized user in the current session and uses a provided deserialization function to, to provide the user in rec dot user to all following middlewares and routes. And we are going to talk about a little bit about serialized users and deserialized users. Okay. And the last thing I want to do is actually set up rec dot users. Um, we want to make that global. And the reason why is because I want to have a different navigation for people that are logged in and people that are logged out. So I want to make that global so that way we could use it. If there is a user, we'll use a different navigation and all that stuff. So we're going to just set that gl global. You don't have to do this, but set dot user. And this is going to be a middleware. So rec res and then next there is arrow function. And right here we're going to says you already know how to set this. You should know how to set this globally res dot locals dot user. I'm just name it user obviously. And we're going to set that equal to rec dot users. Now remember this is coming from the session, which comes from the deserialized user function. And we are going to talk about it. Don't worry about that. Okay. And we're going to just return next unless, unless you want it to hang, then don't return next next and now let's use this in our application so back in app.js we are going to be including that so right here const auth is going to equal require require and then where is that at inside of libs so lib and then auth and then right before or after the session, remember, we're going to be using session. So we want to use this or initialize that afterwards. So right when we created a session, we're going to do app.use auth dot initialize, initialize. And I'm going to do this two more times. And then what we want to do after we initialize, we want to do the session and then afterwards set the user set user. Now, after we set all this, we want to uh, use a strategy to see to authenticate people. Now there's different strategies that you could use. You could use Google, Twitter, Facebook, or local. The one we're going to be using is local. I know some people want to use Google and stuff like that, but honestly, if you just know one of them, which is going to be local, you could probably use you could probably use the same um, concept of that one and just use it again with Google. It's literally the same exact thing. It's just going to you're going to add a little bit different things. But we do for every strategy that you do use, you do need to add it as a module because it does not come pre-installed with Passport. So we need to npm. I dash dash save 
and this is called pass port dash dash local because we're, we're going to be using the local strategy okay so i'm control save this over here in auth what we want to do is require that so loc const local strategy is going to equal require passport local and we want to grab the strategy from that like just like so and with this strategy obviously we're, we're going to be authenticating people from the database so we do need to grab our user model so user model is going to equal require and then we're out of directory models slash user model all right now we need to tell passport we want to use this strategy our local strategy to authenticate our users so what we need to do is say passport dot use We want to use a new instance of local strategy. And there is some things we need to do. So by default, local strategy gives us back a username and password, which is correct. But in this case, we want to authenticate them by their email. So what I need to do here is actually say, hey, uh, instead of giving us back our username, we want to Every time you find a username field, we want to just find the email. So it gives us back our username from rec.body.username and then rec.body.password, right? Basically, we were saying right here, hey, when you get the rec.body.username, just use the email coming back from that and just set it up as the username, okay? So now our username is going to be the email coming back from rec.body, okay? We're just saying that. If you, if you left it out, then you will have the username and the email, which is maybe that's something that you want, but I don't. I want to authenticate them by their email. All right, now that we have that, next stop is async because we're going to be using await. We're going to have a username. Well, not field, just username and password. Password. And then done once we actually have that stuff. Okay, now that we have their username and password coming back coming back to us, which remember the username is the email. Just I know I'm gonna say that. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I'm gonna say that a lot. We're going to do a try catch block and then catch with an error. If there's an error, we're going to return done with the error inside of that. Okay, now let's do our try catch block or our try. So the first thing we want to do is actually grab the user by their email. So what I want to do here is say const user equals await. And then user model dot find one. Where's the one at? There it is. Find one. And our query parameter is going to be where email is going to equal our user email that we got back, which is our email. So user name. Oh, sorry. Username. And then we're going to attach dot exec. So that way we could get a promise. Back. All right, now that we have our const user, or con I don't know why I say const user. Now that we have our const user, we're going to do a quick if statement. If there is no user, what we want to do is just return done. Now, done does take in a few arguments, and I could show you. It does take the first argument is going to be error, and then the user and then whatever we want afterwards. So obviously if there is no user, we don't have an error per se. So we're gonna just say null and we're gonna say false because we don't have a user, false. And then I want to add a mesh, a message, a message, a message. So we're gonna say message and we're gonna just say 
invalid invalid username or password and that's basically it for that now down here we're going to also grab our password so const password we're going to set that or actually this password is going to be the unencrypted password so we're going to actually say we're going to use that compare function that we set up in our models to compare our passwords and it's going to return a yes or no it was a match or it was not a match so i'm going to say password uh i don't know password i don't know okay i'm just <laughs> password if it's okay i'm going to say await dude i'm terrible with names user dot compare compare password or ooh, or whatever we called it over here let me see let me just make sure that we actually did call it what we did yes compare password so i'm just copy this so user dot compare password and we're going to be passing in the password that we got up here okay and then we're going to say the exact same thing right here copy paste if there is no password or password okay was false then what we're going to do is hey return null false with a message invalid username or password which yeah is true and then if everything goes okay what we want to return is done with null as the error and our user as our user which up here is our exact user and that's basically it for our local strategy for email or for username and password which our username is email now what we need to do is serialize our user and deserialize our user and there's a great uh i found a uh, what's it called a stack overflow form for this or not really a form but someone asked the question what is a user or a deserialized user deserialized user what does it do and i have that link down below but i will give you a brief summary or general overview on what that does okay so right here passport dot serialize user and where we're going to, what are we going to get is our user and done and what we're going to be giving back is done done with no errors and our user dot underscore ID now remember this underscore ID is our Mongo uh, underscore ID remember Mongo gives us an ID which is underscore ID so we're using that and right here you could actually pass in whatever you want you could pass in the whole user data if you wanted to but this would mean that when a user is deleted or data is changed the stored user object in the session would still be the same now remember serialized user is going to store our user or whatever we send back which is our user id is going to store this in a session okay and like i said you could store whatever you want in that session but for right now we're only going to be storing and the id the reason why like i said is because if they do decide or if we do delete or something happens they change some property in the user uh, database well that session is still going to have that old data which we don't we don't really want so that's the only reason we're going to be passing in the user ID where we want to grab the actual user the whole object is in the deserialized object okay or yeah so passport dot deserialize user and this is going to be async because we're going to be grabbing our user from our uh, user ID so the ID and don't worry I will explain how this all flows and how it's all done oops so we're gonna do a try catch so try with something and then catch which is going to be an error and then if there is an error what we want to do is return done with the error all right, our try is we're going to actually do the same thing up here. 
but instead of find one, we're going to be doing find by ID, passing in the ID as our query parameter. So ID. This is basically the same thing as we want to find uh, something by ID by the ID being the ID, whatever, right? So we're just doing that. So once we do that, we're going to return done with null as our error and our user as our user. So right here, so in the case that a user could not be found because maybe it was deleted from the database, this would not be a problem because then Passport would also not be able to deserialize the user and the user would not authenticate. So this is not, this is why we're just leaving it like this and not actually uh, checking if there's a user and you know doing all that stuff. And that's basically it guys for Passport. It's not that hard, you just need to understand what's going on. So let me actually tell you what's going on. So we're using our local strategy and how the workflow, how the workflow goes, okay? So let's say you have a form up. They put in their email and their password, right? So once they hit that submit button, we're going to be doing this first. We're going to be authenticating. This is going to run first. So we're going to be authenticate them obviously by their email and password. Let's say that let's say that it all passes and we're we're actually done. It's actually I'll take it authenticated the user is authenticated right next up is what happens is passport serializes our user meaning that once this is done and we return our user passport is going to serialize our user meaning storing it storing whatever we want inside a session by getting the user that we just got from our passport.use getting our user and that's basically it now we, we just send done and sending in the user id now our passport or we have a session with the user ID inside of it. Okay. Now what happens after that? Every time someone makes a request, what, what happens is passport is going to deserialize our user with the ID coming inside of the session or it gets the ID from the session. And what we want to do is just grab that user by the ID and there you go. Bada bing, bada boom. It's pretty much simple once you understand it. And don't worry, guys, the serialized user and deserialized user is going to be more. If you read the uh, uh, Stack Overflow uh, question, I guess, or the answer to that question, you'll get a more understanding of what this actually does. But basically, serialized session and deserialized attaches it to the rec.user. So, anyways, guys, that is it for this video, guys. I just wanted to do a passport. Uh, implementation which we did now in the next video we're going to be using it with our login and actually providing a log log out link as well and talking about what's the difference between authentication and authorization and protecting routes so that's it for this video guys I hope you liked it I hope you learned something from this uh, let me actually open up passport JS and so that way you can see the different strategies that they have. So we have, we're using Passport Local, which uses the uh, username and um, the email, okay? But like I said, you could use, where is it at? Our Google OAuth, which is pretty much almost the exact same thing uh, that we're doing, okay? And you could check out, let me see, um, go right here. And it tells you how to use it right here, you see, but you are going to need a Google client ID and a Google client secret. And if you want me to go over how to actually do this, let me know down in the comments down below and I will do a quick video on how to do a Google strategy or, you know, with Passport. And so that way we could get authentication with uh, Google strategy or with Google. So anyways, guys, that's it. I don't want to take too long, too much of your time. That's it for this video, guys. And I will see you in the next video where we're going to talk about the other stuff that I mentioned in the previous. So please like the video, hit that like button, comment down below, and please subscribe to my channel if you have not. And if you find my, my stuff valuable, then for sure subscribe. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.